So here, this would be a shorter section, but we can have lots of time for Q&A. So I would love to introduce to everybody this resource, EWG Stack Data Database. Uh, let's see, do I uh, quickly check in? Yes, I will come back to the previous slide, but I wanted to share the link. So everybody, if you want, you can write it down. You can use a search engine, ewg.org forward slash tap water. And I would love to tell about the kind of resources that one can find in the database. So together with a team of EWG data analysts, um, uh, toxicologists, and people who understand a lot more about database architecture than I do, we have been building this resource since 2005. The WG Tap Water Database compiles data on chemical contaminants detected in the tap water all across the country in all 50 states. So you can see that when one comes to the page, there is a convenient search option that will say find your water. One can put in a zip code and uh, then the zip code will bring up the names of the community water systems and ones where one lives. May very well be that we have, um, you know, a whole bunch of water systems. We might not know which one it is. Then we can look at the water bill if we receive it or just look by, by proximity. So what the database does is going for the different types of chemicals detected in the water and then talking about the health impacts that those chemicals, those chemical contaminants can cause. The good news is that the beauty does not stop there, that we have lots of consumer resources in particular. I want you to flag uh, in the beauty's filter guide. Because I would say that we as a society have not invested enough in recent years, really recent decades, into protecting and safeguarding drinking water quality. What happens is a lot of water infrastructure, which we have in place, is actually fairly old. Decades old. So, um, I am based in Washington, D.C., which is where the BG headquarters are. Now, some of that infrastructure is from late 19th century. Hence, right there, right, it is slowly getting replaced nowhere near fast enough as it needs to be while there are environment while there is environmental pollution with new types of contaminants when we spoke about cookware i talked about those fluorinated chemicals that have gone into the making of certain types of those non-stick pads those fluorinated chemicals are also water contaminants so that's why the bg recommends um uh, you know coming to the bg's filter guide doing one's own research of the even a simple countertop uh, picture filter, such as the one that one sees in the picture, can already remove a whole bunch of contaminants, not all of them. And very often, when people uh, start you know, researching their drinking water quality more, they may be interested in investing in kind of the best of what is available in their consumer product market today, which is reverse osmosis treatment systems. They are popular because they remove more contaminants. But they also have the drawbacks. And the biggest drawbacks is that the way reverse osmosis systems work is they basically waste a part of the water. They kind of produce some more purified water, but a whole bunch of water goes into the waste stream, which under the conditions of drought is that many parts of the country, most recently, of course, California, have been experiencing that that aspect of reverse osmosis is, is not so positive. But Filtering, first of all, drinking water is essential. Drinking water is infinitely better than drinking soft drinks. Uh, EWG does recommend for consumers to uh, filter their tap water upon doing research. You know, some people, whether uh, there are water systems in the country that are really doing pretty well in terms of protecting their water quality, but really all across, all across the nation, the challenge of contaminants in drinking water persists. And that's why many people who come to the WG website say, see, see what the WG has to say about water filters. So I will go to, to the next slide just so that everybody can see uh, the link where one can learn to look up your water system and to learn more about water filters. And let's see what questions do we get from our audience. Um, so. I, I guess everybody should click on that link and put their zip code in just to see what because we have people from all over the country. So absolutely really smart for everybody to do that. Um, Linda, are there any questions? Um, yes, I know you had mentioned in regards to um, the Brita pitcher. Um, uh, 
is, is that a good place to start? You know, is, is there, it, again, it can be overwhelming. I think once you some see what's actually in your water. Um, so I'm sure there's different levels of where to start, but would the Brita filter be a, a good start for people? Is I guess yeah. my question. That is very much so. And I would love to even, you know, Brita is a brand. There are many other brands. So a peachy filter, with a replaceable filter cartridge. The one that one often sees on the countertop, many people put that filter pitcher into their refrigerator because they prefer their water cold. It is a great place to start. Those types of filtration cartridges would remove uh, many of the common water contaminants, in particular, water disinfection byproducts. So important to emphasize here, water disinfection is essential. Water disinfection often, not always, but often uses the same chlorine or varieties of chlorine as we spoke in bleach, but it's a different type of setting. It's the big water plant setting where the chlorine is controlled, but still toxic and also cancer causing disinfection byproducts do form from, from the use of chlorine. Chlorination or other types of disinfection is essential. Otherwise we would have bacteria in our water. Not good. That's what they had in the 19th century, not good. But that's uh, a basic filter picture would do a great job in minimizing the concentration of those disinfection byproducts and also lead. Philadelphia, New York, Newark, Washington, D.C., we all have problems with legacy lead pipes that our communities are struggling to find enough funds to remove. We are all trying as communities, but the lead pipes are still in many communities, and that filter picture will do a good job at removing lead. Now, what's really important is timely replacement of cartridges. Cartridges are not magic. Uh, whatever is the manufacturer life on how many water passes through, after that, basically cartridge keeps on catching those contaminants. But if the cartridge is old, guess what happens the other way around? Cartridge can, has accumulated so many contaminants, it can release some back into the water that I think came filtering. So buying a filter pitcher, great first step. Replacing the cartridge according to the recommended replacement app, second essential step, because otherwise one might as well not bother buying the filter. And That's also, a good point. Nice and you need, yeah. right, and you need reminders to do that. Yes, I think. reminders, put it in your phone, stick it in your refrigerator, whatever works. Uh, nowadays, some of the fancy filter pictures, they come like with a little light where it will blink or something, they replace the cartridge. I also do want to emphasize, we at the BG realized that for many people in the country, even that routine expense of replacement filter cartridge may be economically too much. So just to realize that community water systems are starting to realize that there are some pilot programs around the country to provide water filters, particularly where people know that they have lead pipes, lead in their water. So looking for resources that if one says, you know, I cannot afford, I maybe I buy a filter pitch, I cannot afford to buy a cartridge every other month looking for options for support there are of course nonprofits who support in terms of water filtration particularly for lead because filtering out the lead is really essential for children's health it's important for us adults too but essential for children's health and so for a the lot of, will do it. i just want to get to some of these questions yes. I, so if you can I, there's just um for a lot of people who buy bottled water or they go and um, to you know, some places you can fill up. How do you? How can you find out if that water is safe? So, it's, you know, you don't know if it's where it's coming from. Yes. Yeah. Uh, indeed. Um, not so good news about quality of our tap water has uh, contributed to increasing the bottled water consumption, and it's simultaneously it's economically just tremendously disadvantageous. And indeed, people don't know where the particular bottled water has come from. There have been some powerful investigation reporting saying that the bottled water that one buys in the supermarket and those big canisters is just local tap water bottled and marked up you know, a thousand times or some such thing. That's why economically, EKWG recommends that countertop filter. It will provide quality likely equal or superior to the local you know, bottled water in the supermarket. Right. Um, okay, one person's asking if you boil your water, is that going to make a difference? Well, if the local water system has issued a boil water advisory, likely because there has been a leak in a pipe 
and there is a risk that the distribution pipe system has had some bacteria sneak in, that water system will likely fix it. But if they issue the boiled water advisor, please boil your water. That is essential. You may or may not have bacteria in your water, but that's not boiling water is essential. And may, if not save lives and prevent diarrhea, and that is good. Boiling water will not remove the contaminants. But boiling water is important when there is a notice. Thank you. Lynn, do you have anything, other questions? Um, I know there's a couple of questions in regard to reverse osmosis systems. Yeah. Any recommendations? People say, obviously, that's really expensive, can be really expensive. Yeah. I don't know if there's any recommendations for something that's less expensive that you know of. Well, I would like to share that I, we are seeing a lot of innovation in the home water treatment system. I don't have, uh, and, and wouldn't, no, this is not the format to share specific shopping recommendations because there's so much diversity even in the reverse osmosis system. And we are seeing that there is now a price range for the you know, more reverse osmosis systems, which are not as expensive as they used to be. But um, one still wants to remember that it's not just the initial installation cost. The maintenance cost, that cartridge replacement, is something also not to forget. Reverse osmosis is also not magical. And there, a good question to consider is, is one going to do it oneself? Is it enough to change the, uh, the filter in the pitcher filter? Less so on the reverse osmosis unless one is more comfortable with a screwdriver and so on. So that's a consideration when installing a reverse osmosis is the cost of operation and maintenance over the life cycle of use of the product. I think one other thing that question that's coming up, we had a lot of discussion around plastic yes. and now a lot of the containers for the water are plastic Absolutely. that are out there. Is, is that safe? Is there research that needs to be done to make sure that that water pitcher that's plastic is safe? So this takes us to the very important, in fact, essential research topic that so many people are in our interested in, and that is the topic of microplastic pollution. And, in, and we are not, it's not quite the same as the big Pacific Ocean garbage patch with you know, visible pieces of plastic which are floating out there due to our runoff from the land. But even from routine plastic products, that water bottle, guess what? It's made of plastic, it's probably shedding small invisible to the eyepieces of the plastic into the bottled water that the user may be drinking. So those questions are now being raised about plastic-based water treatment systems. Many of them have not been definitively answered as yet. The state of California is making some great progress in a few years. We should have much more data about microplastic testing in California drinking water systems because many components of the drinking water systems themselves are plastic. So I think it's like an area of emergent research. And we come back to, it's still better to filter your water, but important, don't want that filter to sit open in the sun because it is the higher temperature exposure that can increase the shedding of the plastic component into whatever liquid that we are holding in it. Thank you. And just one other quick question in regards, there's a couple of questions that came in about water filter cartridges that are in the refrigerators. Um, uh, are they effective? I, is it the same issue of it's still, we need to replace those or how, how do they work and function? Uh, conceptually, water filter cartridges, are probably, most of the technology is based on activated carbon or granular carbon. And my concern about the refrigerator cartridges is exactly what you need. My concern is that people forget about it. And it's like, oh, it's there once installed and that they don't do timely replacement. I don't know what is the recommended maintenance schedule. I suspect it would be different depending on the refrigerator model. But whatever it is, I think it's essential to find out and to find out what the manufacturer recommendations are on how to replace it and should one do it oneself or call a, basically a person with a certification to do that. Great, and just one last question. Does reverse osmosis take out essential minerals? It sure does, and that's why uh, many reverse osmosis systems, when they sell the systems, they, they may also provide basically mineral drops to add to the reverse osmosis treated water, both for taste as well as because uh, drinking, basically it's like drinking desalinated water. It actually can destabilize the ionic balance in our body. So 
um, that's usually the manufacturer instructions with the reverse osmosis system will include uh, that uh, those recommendations for remineralization, putting the minerals back. 